Hello and welcome to uh, the Fits on the Go uh, at ACC 2022. I'm Yuvraj Chaudhary. I'm the Chief Cardiology Fellow at SUNY Downstate, and I have the pleasure of being here with Dr. Mehdi Shishibor. Uh, Dr. Shishibor is here at ACC to dis uh, discuss the results of his latest trial about above the knee interventions. Welcome, Dr. Shishibor. Uh, uh, let's start by talking about what we already know about above-the-knee interventions. Where do we stand with drug-coated balloons, stent, and, and balloon angioplasty, maybe? Well, uh, listen, thank you so much for having me, Yuvraj, and it's been fantastic to be here at ACC this year. It's nice to see everyone in person, and obviously the best part for me is interacting with the fellows and uh, just learning about all the exciting things that they are doing. So it's been really fantastic. Um, related to the, what's happening currently in the field of vascular, um, as you know, uh, 10 years ago, most of the lesions in the SFA and popliteal artery were treated with a stent. We used to call it a full metal jacket. Right. But we learned that when you put these stents, they come back and they hunt you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, these patients came back, they had instant restenosis, and the treatment options for instant restenosis are very limited. So we were very excited when drug-coated balloons came to fruition and that they really have had a significant impact in regards to leave nothing behind. So the approach of uh, angioplasty or atherectomy plus DCB uh, with good results and now we have five-year data with four devices that have been approved in the United States, first-generation drug-coated balloons. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, Dr. Shushibor, the, the results you're going to discuss at ACC today, can you tell us about how the study was planned, what the design is, and, and what you were looking to show in your study? Yeah, that's the most exciting part of cardiovascular medicine, right? You know, we always want to evolve. We want to be better. We want to be more personalized, right? We want to improve on our technology and our techniques. And uh, what we learned from the first generation DCBs, while they are fantastic, and they allowed us to leave nothing behind, they had a number of limitations. As you know, DCBs can cause uh, dissection, and we learned that sometimes about 30 to 40% of the patients that receive DCBs require the bailout stenting at the time of intervention. Mm -hmm. So that's obviously one limitation. Mm -hmm. The other limitation is a recoil. Uh, because we don't want to have this section, we typically undersize these balloons. So uh, we have significant recoil. And uh, lastly, there is calcification. And we know when there is significant calcification, the drug cannot be transmitted to the vessel wall. Mm -hmm. So the question was, are there second generation devices that could address some of those limitations? And uh, we decided to study a second generation device. It's called the Chocolate Touch DCB. And this device has unique properties that may address some of those limitations. For one, uh, this device has a balloon uh, with a nitinol constraining cage that creates uh, pillows and grooves, just like a chocolate bar. Mm -hmm. And that's why they call it chocolate, I by see. the way. And, uh, and basically what those grooves and the pillows do, they cause differential infla inf inflation. Okay. And that differential inflation uh, is believed to cause less vessel trauma and dissection. Additionally, those grooves and pillows increase the surface area by 20%, which we believe allows more drug delivery to the vessel wall. So the question was, uh, would a second generation device like this would have better efficacy and safety compared to the first generation DCB, in this case, Lutonix? Now, that sounds very interesting, and we are all excited to hear what the results of the second generation device are. So take it away, Dr. Shishibor. Tell us what you found. Well, it was very interesting, you know, what uh, we found. Obviously, the study was conducted in patients with uh, peripheral artery disease involving the superficial femoral artery and the popliteal artery. Uh, and these were patients with Rotterfeld classification 2, 3, and 4. Mm -hmm. And what we found that at 12 months, uh, chocolate touch was non-inferior to Lutonix DCB, uh, one, uh, both from a standpoint of efficacy and safety, but the study was powered to then test superiority if the primary non-inferiority was met. So we then tested superiority and we found that chocolate touch at one year was superior wow. to Lutonix DCB from a standpoint of efficacy and patency, uh, which is exciting because we always want head-to-head -head randomized clinical trials. We want to be able to compare second generation versus first generation and we want the field to evolve and we want to get better as to what we offer to our patients. 
Oh, that's amazing. It's, it's great to know about these advances which are occurring uh, in the peripheral world. So uh, if you were to sort of highlight two to three takeaway points uh, from the results of 